My name is Chris Zavala here, and I'm here with Dio Rodriguez. And we interviewed some people at a college, which is Sacramento State. I interviewed uh, Robert Nelson, the president of it. And I interviewed Carlos Navarez. He was the vice president, but I couldn't interview him. So I interviewed a student named uh, Omer Paz, I think. And I would like to start off saying that my my interview went well, saying that like, he had to switch up his career midway because he didn't have the funds for it, which was being a psychology psychological therapy something like that goes along the lines like that and mine uh well he first he uh wanted to be an artist but that couldn't happen so he became a history or he majored in history so now he's trying to pursue his career in history as a kid he always looked up to his to his parents mainly his um dad because he would always be there supporting helping and doing whatever he needed to do and from uh, my person he really didn't have nobody because he was a older child and his parents were just trying to support him during school. So he would just try and focus on art, but you know, at the end, uh, plans changed. Right after high school, he didn't go to a JC, he didn't go straight to work, he just went straight to college. He wanted to get his career over with and done because he wanted to get money and do what his career wanted, what career he really wanted to do, but change it up a little bit. And after high school for him, he actually started working at Safeway for a couple, uh, like for a year and a half, I think, until he could earn a lot of money so he could go to Sac City. Or actually, he started at the JC then or transferred to Sac City. One of the main challenges for him was for um, getting into college and getting rides about like, like he just like, cause he didn't have a car, so like he had like, to ask his parents or ask a friend every time. And one of the challenges for him was not getting the support he needed, cause uh, his parents would just work and he had a younger sibling, so they couldn't help him out. Going into college, they didn't know how it was gonna be like. It was a new environment for him, so he had to uh, get adjusted to it. Going college for him, he actually liked it because uh, the people he was with were kind of exactly like him. So they would uh, not party, not drink, or not smoke. So it was just perfect for him. So. His first year there, he stayed in the dorm room, and I asked. Him. So the guy I interviewed said that it, you should stay in the dorm because you know you could live that college experience. How everybody said. Up next, we're gonna have Jeremiah Hernandez Hart Tinsley and Jennifer Sanchez. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jennifer Sanchez. And I'm Jeremiah Anthony Hernandez Hart Tinsley. I interviewed Samuel Jones, the director of housing and training. I interviewed Ed Mills, the president of uh, student affairs. I asked questions, or I had called and asked to speak to him, but his assistant answered, and I was allowed to give her some questions to forward to him. Um, uh, when I asked him questions, I asked him like who was his role models when he was young and like what he wanted to be when he was young and the dreams he had. Just, he wanted to be an engineer, but being an engineer didn't really work out, so he went to being the president of student affairs at Sac State. And his one of his role models that he had was his mom. He always looked up to his mom for everything, you know. His mom was his everything in life. Some of the questions I forwarded to, to her were. <laughs> were Good. I, I had someone else in mind at first, but like you know, it didn't go so well. But yeah, I see our interviews went pretty good. And um, when she forwarded it, I actually never got a response. So then I ended up contacting the student at the school. Um, what's it called? They, it's actually, they were the first to like message me back, you know, because like I, apparently they liked me more than Christian Diego and Jennifer. And Chief. But yeah, I was the first one that got a message back. They left them on delivery. That's it for today. That was all four of our interviews. You already know what it is. Not specifically role models, no. No role models that basically taught me for anything about history. I think most of the teachers that I went through high school taught me, basically. But for art, I did have one that basically inspired me to be to be an artist. But that that ship that sailed a long time ago. So everything has changed back then.
did you ever have a teacher that supported you the whole way through like you could come back to them and help you out, or like you know help you out there have been some teachers i guess one teacher i think it's uh mr mogaram that uh, i had him during summer school one time and we had like the same uh a class that he taught us basically and it was called the college college prep mm -hmm. so he taught a class about um how colleges uh work how, how they differ great but you're really not learning until you've had to struggle with something or you've made a mistake and realized what the mistake is that's true learning and um so I was lucky, you know, I, I, my dad's passed away, but my, I was lucky to have someone like that that was patient with me. Um, and just really, you know, it was, it was that advice that I took my whole life. It's a good piece of information yeah. for you. I really like that. Yeah. Um, so when you're around our age, what were your goals like that you had in mind? How old are you guys? We're 15, 16. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I wanted to buy a new car. <laughs> that was my goal. <laughs> that's your goal. Yeah, that's also my goal. Yeah, that's mostly. <laughs> I had, uh, in, in Kansas at that time, so I, I lived on a farm in Kansas, um, you, could, you could get a learner's permit at 14 because you needed to drive on the farm, right? You could drive tractors and different yeah. things. And I had this um mechanical engineering program here is often building equipment for the um ocean science programs that are at monterey bay and humboldt it's really fascinating to me i don't know a lot about that but i know that you can do both of those things because one of the things marine biologists need is good equipment mm -hmm. so having both of those skills you'll be set right. um okay. as a kid it was always like a dream just to like become a pro soccer player, but now uh, it's either becoming like a mechanical engineer or a, what do they call it again? It's like a businessman or an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. That's my <laughs> Is it? And again, you can sort of do both of those things. So, you know, getting your degree, do something in your, your college degree that you enjoy. Yeah. Uh, whether that's business entrepreneurship, mechanical engineering, you know, for me it was biology. I just, I really enjoyed biology and health science. Um, if you have fun, then you're going to have some courses that you're like, wow, I don't really like this course, but somehow I have to get through it. But the other courses you're going to love and enjoy. You'll get to do all kinds of cool things. Like I said, please study in other countries, you know, right. do... Uh, we didn't even have in my high school you couldn't even study another language there wasn't anybody in that part of Kansas to, mm -hmm. to teach you so when you're here and you have all this opportunity just explore you know right. take advantage of all of that those are things I, I wish I, I could have done but um, I know entrepreneurs who were mechanical engineers oh, really? um, and have moved into the business world and and actually vice versa. I know somebody who studied business who wanted to build equipment and then came back and got a mechanical engineering.